All right, I'm gonna go over the differences between a pounded well using a cable tool and a, and a drilled well using a rotary drill uh, machine. Uh, and that's the one that I chose to use. Uh, but in the beginning, I was trying to do water catchment and I cleared that with the uh, Department of Health here. Um, and then a year later, I called to confirm and they told me that I needed to have a well into bedrock in order to get my CFO. Uh, that caused, that was a big issue because they told me I didn't need it at first, but when they did tell me I needed it, I had no intention of using a well anyway, so I wanted to make it as cheap as possible. Uh, so in doing research, I found out that potentially doing a pounded well could be cheaper than doing a drilled well because that pounding action, that it fracturing the rock, actually think about it, it's fracturing the rock to break it up for, to drill your hole, but that pounding is actually making little fractures going outwards away from your well. And what that's doing, it's helping you to develop water in the bedrock faster by fracturing out away from your hole and tapping into veins that may you may not have directly hit, but now you can kind of access them through those little fractures. So if you've got a bunch of those as you're going down, a bunch of little like points of water coming in, over, over depth, as you keep doing that, you develop water. And you know, you're really looking to get, you can get by with as little as just a few gallons a minute of, of, uh, of water coming into your well. Uh, but you really, like, it would be nice to get 10 plus gallons per minute. So you have a greater chance of getting that before you hit that big vein. Using a cable tools, it's really expensive. It is, I was quoted, the cheapest quote that I could get was $20 per foot for casing and then another $20 per foot into bedrock uh, for the actual drilling or pounding in bedrock. Um, and that compares to the rotary drill at um, $16 a foot for casing and $10 a foot for drilling in the bedrock, which is the best price that I got, which is what I ended up taking. You know, it was a, it was a risk either way. Um, people say that with the, with the rotary drill, um, you know, it's going really fast and it's blowing out compressed air and water to make a slurry, which then gets blown up around the sides of the drill bit and up the whole shaft up to the top surface where it just comes out. You know, the issue with that I was told is that, you know, that slurry can actually clog up uh, small holes, small veins. Like as you're going down, if you tap into a small vein that's putting a little water in, that slurry can literally just seal it up like, like concrete. Just pack it all in as, as it blows up with that pressure. Um, the cable tool um, doesn't do that, supposedly. It, it uses some, it uses like suction, and they have to bail out all the debris every once in a while. Typically, you have to go deeper on a rotary drilled well uh, than you do on a pounded well, which costs, which may cost more money, but at the same time, the cost per foot is much cheaper. The other thing too is that a rotary drill, literally, you can drill a well down hundreds of feet in a single day. Mine took a few days because they were just taking their time, but literally in one day you could have a whole well complete. Um, the cable tool literally takes weeks. 20, what did he say? I think it was like 20 feet a day, 40 feet a day or something like that. Um, very slow. You know, I weighed all the, all the possibilities together and I decided to go with the rotary drill, which in retrospect, I think ended up being cheaper than it would have been. Um, with the cable tool after seeing what actually happened here. We went down 325 feet, 180 feet of overburden. I'm pretty well convinced uh, that we went the cheaper route. Well, I hope uh, this really enlightened you if you didn't really know much about how wells were created. Um, and uh, blah, blah, blah. Let's start this over again.